Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the... Literalist Reactions. I hope you get a kick out of watching it. I've figured it out, John. I've, if you watch these videos back to back, um, I've been drinking this tea uh, that was a gift from my uh, new landlord here right on the coast. And it's so hard to describe. It's a fermented pear tea from South Korea. And it leaves a film in your mouth, so it has a weird mouthfeel. But the mouthfeel itself has a good flavor. So <laughs> I like it. I like this tea a lot. Um, I look forward to trying that. It was a four a box of four different kinds of teas. I look forward to trying the other ones. But boy, this one's a I, I love tea. I drink a lot of tea and this is odd in a good way. Just like you, John. Maybe that's why I like you. You're like this tea. Odd in a good way. <laughs> hey, thank you. It was a compliment. It was a compliment. Okay, good. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. What do, we, what do we got? So you got trivia for me? Oh, oh, we're on. Okay, good. We're so, we're solid on. We're complete. Mm -hmm. You didn't welcome anybody. You didn't say anything. You didn't say, "Hey, Hello, this is Dave." I'm Dave with literalist with literalist <laughs> reactions. No, you're literalist Dave. <laughs> I'm literal. I'm literal free, John. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, literalist Dave, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you're not gonna have a hard time with these lyrics. Even I know what these lyrics are about. Okay. And. This is Rush. We're going to do some Rush. But first, we're going to do some trivia. Let's get right to this. Dave, it's a multiple choice. Excellent. <clears throat> Always gives me a better chance. Let me give you the choices up front. Mm -hmm. Cherry trees. Okay. Willows. Mm -hmm. Palm trees. Mm -hmm. Redwoods. Mm -hmm. So let's say those trees are in a battle of machismo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Among those trees, which of them do you think could boast as having the largest pair of seeds, if you know what I mean? Oh, all right. What are my options again? Uh, cherry trees, willows, palm trees, redwoods. Willows, palm trees, redwoods. You know, I feel like a palm tree has the largest seeds. And what is your logic? No, I think I'm wrong. Don't buy isn't a coconut tree a different tree than a palm tree? In my head, they look the same. And I was thinking, coconut's a big seed, but that's not right. That's that's not right. <laughs> it's totally wrong. Um, uh, cherry pits are pretty small. Um, I don't I have no idea what a willow tree seed looks like. Isn't it like a pod, right? Aren't willows pods? I don't know. I've never seen a willow tree seed. I don't know. I don't know. And was the other one? Redwood? Yeah. I think redwoods put off cones. I think they're a coniferous type of tree. You know what? I'm going to go redwood. Maybe, although the seed itself is inside of the cone. I, it depends on how you count it, I guess. I you don't know. are pretty smart. You're pretty smart. You're right even when you're wrong. Palm trees <laughs> is the correct answer. Is it? <laughs> Damn, and go with your gut. Because uh, they have some impressive 40-pound seeds. Mm-hmm. A particular giant fan palm. Giant fan palm has a 40-pound seed. So in the Battle of Machismo or Machismo, uh, the fan palm is the big winner. Giant mm. fan. Mm. You'd think having lived on a tropical island and seeing a ton of them, I would have been more confident in that answer. That's <laughs> You know, that's probably why I thought they were all coconut trees, because they just look like, they all look like coconut trees to me. Ah. It's not like I could climb one and get it. You, no. Well, some, I guess the islanders did. There was a time. Mm -hmm. There's still yeah. a time. I yeah. I'll never forget. I was uh, one time when I was in uh, in Okinawa. Um, there was a spot you could go with coconut trees, and uh, a local they would just shimmy right up the tree and then come down with a coconut and mm -hmm. cut it up for you. It was delicious. Neat. Yeah. Sure. All if right. If you're into that kind of thing. So, and I am. Rush onto the rush. rush. Uh, so I started to say I, I was hesitant to do this one for you because. Um, it's another one like Tom Sawyer where I feel you've probably heard this in passing. This is okay. one of the two or three Rush songs that gets massive attention in mm. radio play. Okay. Um, but it, well, we'll leave it with the lyrics for you to discern the lyrics and to tell us what this song is about. Um, and uh, enjoy the, the fantastic tune that it is. The song is called Limelight. Okay, here we go. Good intro. Um, this has been requested the most for Rush songs currently. 
Ah, including our friend Cygnus, White Davison, Clockwork Angel, The Flush, Jim Orr, Martha Sasanowski, and others. That's a lot. It is. This song is about uh, Neil Peart uh, not liking his sudden fame. That's what I think this song's about. It's rather specific. <laughs> I, I I mean, he writes all the lyrics, right? And he's the drummer who hates being famous. He hates the he hates the the, the what comes with fame. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he hates probably I would assume like being approached in public or you know all all of that stuff. So. Right. That's my quick hot take. 45 seconds. We'll see. We'll see how I did. I stand by it. Dang it, Rush. Why? Well, that's an awesome song. Isn't no. that awesome? How is it that a guitar solo can make me feel sorrow? 
<laughs> I, and They're it's, good, man. It's that was incredible. Um, oof. Uh, I 100 percent stand by, um, stand behind my idea for the song. Um, I think that that's very clearly what it's about, and I don't think that's a knock against the song at all. It sometimes it's nice to just say exactly what you mean, and I think this very much said it. Um, I've said many times I have zero desire to be truly famous. Uh, that seems awful. The mm. pop, the paparazzi, the the reporters, the going, you can't go out to eat, you know, with, with your friends without being approached by tons of people. Like, can you imagine being, being the rock or, you know, any Michael Jackson, or like anyone who was just so well known, they can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You can't be a person. Right. Like one of my favorite things is going out with my wife and just exploring local areas and walking towns and eating at local shops and restaurants. And, you literally cannot do that at a certain level of fame. That, and that's one of the reasons that I think Kiss started out with all the makeup, so that no matter sense. how famous they got, they could be completely nondescript mm -hmm. uh, outside of the concert arena. It's kind of smart. I, yeah. I like I, that makes sense to me. And so, as much as I'm not nearly the the socially awkward um, introvert that I think Neil Peart is, I understand entirely what he's saying like that's that's a life i do not want mm. um like this channel is fun but i mean come on we're never going to be famous like that and that's fine with me uh, so yeah. i really enjoy once again i i love his lyrics i love his writing style and then musically of course i mean we're back to just a virtuoso drummer and then that guitar solo i'm not kidding the guitar solo started and like i reached a point in the very beginning of the song where i was very i was very happy because I was proud of myself because I, I sussed out these lyrics so fast, you know? So like I was happy with myself and, and just relaxed and, and enjoyed the rest of the song. Um, but then that guitar so solo hit and it brought the full weight of the lyrics down on me hmm. because it almost, it somehow made me sad. It robbed me of the joy I felt. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Alex, I, life's in you, naughty boy. And I think that, that that is such a beautiful compliment to say that you played a guitar solo that made me feel fully the lyrics that were handed to you. Um, hmm. Like that, that is a level of mastery of understanding how music affects us as, as just humans that that's incredible to me. Uh, so... Yes. Stupid rush. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's often said, if you love a band, you always feel the members of the band are underrated or unappreciated by the masses. And and I've long heard that Alex Lifeson is an underrated guitar player. He should certainly make the tops of many lists for his talent and abilities, his, his writing of the uh, leads and of the parts he plays and the way he plays and the excellence of, of uh, the skill with which he plays. And uh, but you know what? It isn't it shouldn't be just Rush fans saying that it should mm. be anybody saying that because the man is a guitar genius when it comes to uh, writing these parts and playing these parts. He really, really is one of the underrated guitar talents of the century. Mm. Yeah, I, I certainly can't uh, dispute that. I will say that this song was slightly familiar. I'm pretty yeah. sure I have heard this in the background at a restaurant or something before. Um but I certainly hadn't ever heard a single lyric that entered and stayed in my brain. So right, gotcha. Well, there you go. It's a great song. Uh, I didn't I didn't choose it for you because, like I said, it's one of the it's one of the surface rush songs. It's way up the top. Uh, but I started to get a little flack from the gang, from the uh, from the fellow humans. Well, they were starting to give me a little flack about if, not playing limelight. If it's good, it's good, John. Yeah. All right. Fair I mean, enough. I gotta say, it's bam. It's right on my playlist. It's uh, ah, there we go. Yeah, there that's go. that is a solid rush song. Um, a, a shorter Rush song too, which I, I don't think is a bad thing at all. Um, I was kind of surprised actually when I saw the length of it, given some of the Rush you've played me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, they shouldn't like. Not only can they not, but they should not all be twenty-minute epics. <laughs> oh, correct. Yeah, yeah. You have no, to be approachable be in way. some way, shape, or form. <laughs> exactly. And this one did get radio play. And uh, Dave, like you said, you know, you're not after fame, and, and you're not a fame hog. And often you don't even read the comments because it just doesn't fit into your schedule. And I get that, and it really doesn't fit into mine either. But I'm obsessed about being careful to answer as many questions as I can that come from 
you know, the fellow humans who are, who are tuned in watching our videos. But I think it's coming to a point where I'm going to need to, you and I, have a non-reaction video where we have Dave answer fellow human questions. Oh, I'm down with that. I I will answer any and all of life's questions. And, the, and I'm not saying my answers will be right. What I said is... I will answer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So on top of the little list I've started, uh, fellow humans, if you'd like to ask Dave a question, uh, or me for that matter, uh, but probably Dave because he's the guy. So just put it down below uh, here in a comment, and uh, very, very soon we're going to get to a – we're going to do one probably before this is released based on questions I've already collected. But if you have additional questions, bam, right there. And Dave. Be ready to answer them, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Oof. I'm ready.